Yeah, it's one minute past 12. So I think we start. So I don't know, it's uh, maybe good morning for some of you and uh, good afternoon uh, for some of you. Um, and I'd like to thank you for joining our webinar this afternoon, the 13th of September, with the title Quality Risk Management for Clean Room Garment Qualification in the Light of GMP, GMP Annex 1. Before moving on to our speaker for today, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Eva Albertson, a Commercial Com Communication Specialist at the Fisher Scientific Channel. Since the beginning of, COVID, of the COVID pandemic in the early part of 2020, we have put together a program of webinars to support you. You can view the upcoming webinars and revisit the previous ones by visiting our webinar webpage, which you can access under events and exhibitions found at the bottom of our main landing page. Now I'd like to introduce you to my colleague, Nicolas Orenberger, another commercial communication specialist at the Fisher Scientific Channel, who is here with me today and will tell you how the quiz question and answer session will work. So over to you, Nicolas. Thank you very much, Eva. Uh, welcome, everybody. Good morning or good afternoon. Um, <laughs> I'm Nicolas. I um, joined the team in uh, April uh, this year, so I'm quite new. And uh, I will, today I will take care about your question. So please free to ask the question, the, the, your question in the chat, and uh, we'll take some time at the end of the meeting or at, during the meeting with uh, Steve to answer to, to our question. Thank you, Nicolas. So today we are joined by a colleague from DuPont, our most important manufacturer of coveralls for all kinds of applications. We have Steve Mana, training manager and critical environment specialist for DuPont Personal Protection. Steve has been at DuPont since 1995. So he has a lot of experience in this area, both with DuPont Personal Protection and in the clean room area. So now I'll hand over to you, Steve. Thank you very much, Eva. And from my side as well, a warm welcome to all of you to this uh, short webinar. Well, what we will be covering today is we will have a look at the brand new GMP NX1. Then we will explain you how you can apply the quality risk management principles to clean room garments. Help you understand the risks linked with operators wearing clean room garments in your clean rooms. Go through the main stages of the validation that are required. And finally, we'll end with our conclusions. But first, let's get started um, with the new requirements of the brand new GMP Annex 1. Well, <clears throat> sorry, as, as you see here, the new GMP Annex 1, it has been in the works for quite some time now, and it was finally published on the 25th of August uh, this year. And when you look into what they are stressing, what is the main change versus the old uh, Annex 1 that was out, is that everything needs now to be covered by quality risk management principles, everything that is done inside the clean rooms processes, equipment, facilities, manufacturing activities, they must all be governed by QRM principles. And you need to have a proactive means of identifying and scientifically evaluating and controlling potential risk to qualities. It will no longer be good enough to just measure if all your particles are within the parameters, it will no longer be acceptable that you say, I've been operating like that for many years. Now you need to understand exactly what you're doing. You need to document it and you need to measure the effects of all the uh, measures you're implementing to reduce your risk to quality. This change was necessary because uh, the authorities, whether it was the European authorities or the uh, American FDA auditors, they have seen an increase of uh, particular pyrogenic and microbiological contamination in pharmaceutical manufacturing. And this trend is, of course, uh, no longer accepted. It's, of 
was not acceptable. What has also changed is that since the last revision of Annex 1, a lot of new technologies for producing drugs have been developed and implemented that were not taken into consideration in previous versions. What also becomes clear with the new GMP Annex 1 is that the emphasis on the clean room garments shows clearly that the clean room garments are seen as the only barrier to keep contamination generated by the operators from contaminated the clean room. It will therefore be very important in the future to fully include your clean room garment system in your contamination control strategy and to assess the risks linked with uh, clean room garments being worn in your clean rooms. Let's have more close focus even on what the GMP Annex 1 is clearly stating on the clean room garments. But here are some excerpts for, from the uh, official document. It reads, for example, that the protective, protective clothing should minimize the shedding of fibers or particulate matter and retain particulars shed by the body. Particle shedding and the particle retention, retention efficiencies of the garments should be assessed during the garment qualification. Now, what, what does this mean? Well, it means that it will no longer be good enough to see if your garments are shedding particles or not. You also need to measure and understand in how far the particles that are generated by your operators will be kept inside the garment so that they don't contaminate the clean room. In other words, we are talking here about the filtration efficiencies. But they must be assessed during the garment qualification by itself. Another thing that they are saying is that reusable clean room garments should be replaced if damage is identified or at a set frequency that is determined during the qualification studies. And the damage alone may not be identified by visual inspection alone, the qualification should consider necessary garment testing requirements as well. In other words, you must clearly know what are the limits of your reusable clean room garments, and you need to work hand in hand with your garment manufacturer and supplier to make sure that you know exactly when the garments must be replaced when they have reached the end of life. For the great AB areas, it is indicated that the operators must wear clean and sterilized protective garments. Now, this is new as well, clean and sterilized. Before it was just said it should be sterilized. Now the garments must be clean as well. What that will mean, I will come to it a little bit later. And for those of you that are working in a BRS environment, in a septic processing, you can have a great C around your uh, equipment, but in that case, you must wear grade A, B clean room garments. So again, clean and stable garments. Let's now see how you can apply these required QRM principles to clean room garments. Well, you need to have a close look both at the material out of which your garments are being made, how the garments are being made, how the garments are being handled, washed, lawn, and sterilized, and brought into your clean facility. You need to understand the risk involved with everything of that, and you need to build in quality by design to have a validated process in place, a validated garments in place. Monitoring is still very important, but it will no longer be sufficient. It will no longer be acceptable if you tell the auditors that you're just controlling uh, the particles in your every cubic meter of air and everything is fine. No, you need to have your contamination control strategy and you need in to build in quality by design. And it all starts with understanding the risks of uh, coming of quality when you have operators inside a clean room wearing clean room garments. And there are three levels of risks linked to that. First, you have the risk that your operators will be shedding skin flakes, uh, bacteria. They will be <clears throat> representing themselves a uh, 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 risk to your quality. Now, in the best of cases, you can say take all the operators out of the clean room and we eliminate the risk. It may work uh, for microelectronics, but for pharmaceutical manufacturing, is still too manual a process. Operators are still needed inside the clean rooms. 
So you cannot get out of it. You need to make sure that the particles of your operators are not contaminating your clean room. But the clean room garments themselves that the operators are wearing may be a risk. They may be shedding particles, they may be damaged during the laundering and sterilization cycles. So you must also be aware and analyze the risks of particle shedding coming from the garments themselves. And then in some environments where you're producing HPAPIs, high potent active pharmaceutical ingredients and medicines based on that, you also need to protect your operators from the hazards they are facing, whether it is quality drugs, whether it is hormone-based medicines, whether it is narcotics or uh, strong painkillers. In these cases, you need to have chemical or biological protective clean room guards. They actually must be both. So they need to offer the right protection for the operator while keeping the clean room clean. Now let's step back to the very first risk of contamination that links to the operator. Multiple, multiple studies have shown that the operators still remain the biggest risk of contamination inside the clean rooms. 75% of all the uh, contamination is coming from the operator inside. Not the ventilation, it's not the structure, it's not the equipment, it's the operators. From a quality risk management approach, what this will mean is if you are not under control of your number one risk, of quality to your operations, well, then you're not in control. You really need to make sure that the contamination risk coming from your operators is under control. Here, a few more words on to show you how big uh, the problem actually is. Here you see a study not by DuPont, but by scientists, but the scientists by the teacher from 2007. They have won a body box test study with 55 people that were wearing uh, reusable clean room garments. And if you look at the average, at the spread of the uh, particles that were being shedded during that test, it is quite enormous. For the main operators, the range of variation was between 222,000 and close to 12 million of 0.5 micron particles shed per minute inside uh, during that test. For the female test persons, it was significantly less but nevertheless, quite a lot of particles and much more than are tolerated in grade AB uh, clean room environments. What this study has also demonstrated is that if you have such a big spread, it is obvious that you will never stop your operators from shedding particles. You can put so much emphasis as you want on training, on hygiene, etc. Fact is, your operators will always be shedding skin flakes, always be shedding bacteria sitting on these skin flakes because they are just human beings. That's who we are. We are constantly shedding particles. It cannot be stopped. So the clean room garments are the only barrier to make sure that these particles shed by the operators stay inside the clean room garment and do not contaminate the clean rooms. And this uh, filtration efficiency is dependent, of course, and needs to be assessed, just as the garment particle shedding must be assessed. The garment particle shedding is linked to the material used for making the clean room garments, but not only. We have also this, the design of the garment. If the zipper or the seams are not made appropriately, well, then there's a risk uh, that they may come to shed particles. For reusable garments, it's also the number of times the garments have been washed, dried, or sterilized that is increasing the number of particle shedding. And then finally, the, the processing, the supply chain, the handling. Every time somebody is touching a garment, you're bringing in a risk of uh, contamination with the garments. And then, as I said before, if you have the dual risk of contamination for the operators and the clean room, it is mandatory that your clean room garments are also CE certified as chemical and biological protection. So let's now walk to the main stage uh, of validation that you can apply for validating clean room garments. Well, it's the same principles that you use for many other processes and equipment inside the clean room. It's a well accepted process. It starts with the definition of the user requirements before you go over to the design qualification. 
the installation qualification, the operational qualification, and finally the performance qualification. So you all know this process of DQ, IQ, OQ, and TQ. I'm pretty much convinced of that. Now, what are these main stages and how can you apply them to the Latino task? Well, uh, one of my colleagues who is working for uh, Tyvek Medical Packaging together with a pharmaceutical um, consultant has developed uh, this methodology here where you can have a, a quality risk management based uh, approach with the different steps from DQ to PQ with different elements to make sure that your garments are properly qualified. And the biggest impact on quality you have it during the design qualification and the installation qualification. That's where you can have the biggest impact on making sure uh, that your garments are meeting, your garment system is meeting your requirements. And here you see in this table listed all the different elements that you need to have a look at during the different stages. Now we won't have time to go in detail into it, but um, as this webinar is recorded, you can have a look at it later and uh, go through the different elements. I will just take a few elements to uh, explain you what we mean by this. We start with the URS with the user requirements specifications. Now the user requirements specification must be developed in such a way that the operators can work at least three hours in the same set of garments without creating a risk of contamination with the environment. So this means you will have need to have a look at how the garment is being made, the design, the system you are going to wear. Do you want to have an a one-piece suit uh, with food or foods? Do you have a? Do you want to have a three-piece suit? Do you want to have a useful or single-use garment? You need to uh, make sure how the garments are being folded so that they can be uh, dressed aseptically. You should you should start evaluating how clean the garments must be, the filtration efficiencies you must must have, and you should also have a look at the packaging. Uh, in which packaging are garments coming in? Does it meet my requirements of the operators? Is it easy to open? Is it easy to check? Is there a risk of packaging in the shedding particles when you open it? The garments, how are you going to identify? Do they have a lock number? Do we have a chip inside? Uh, the, uh, the garment must be identifiable at all times, even after the garment has been worn in case there's an issue, so we can all go back and have a look where the problem may be coming from. Once you have design, uh, defined your URS, you go over to the design qualification, the DQ. And the purpose of that is to make sure that the garments you have selected during your URS are qualified for the intended use. So you must uh, <coughs> sorry, include steps in your validation uh, process. And it is a good idea to follow an international standard like the ISO 607-1 in this process because it's a more widely acceptable by political computing. So this standard recommends that you split the DQ into four areas, material qualification, performance testing, stability testing, and usability testing. Now, Steve, uh, I have to interrupt you. you. Sure. Uh, it's because the, the sound is uh, it's coming and uh, going. Uh, I, think, I don't know, uh, also Nicolas uh, have that uh, issue. So I don't know if uh, you can do something about uh, the audio. Uh, well, I can, I can give it a try. Normally it should be yeah. working fine. <laughs> I move closer, closer to the microphone if this is helping. Is this better? Yeah, maybe. Yes, it is. Okay. Thank okay. you. Good. Sorry for that. Um, then, um, as I said, you need to split your DQ into four areas. Material qualification, performance testing, stability testing, and usability evaluation. Let's start with the uh, DQ first. Uh, and here you see an overview for the different um, tests, scientific tests that you can do for the different uh, steps for the material qualification. You see that the list is quite long for the uh, performance testing, the stability testing, and the usability evaluation. 
these are a different tests that you can use to measure and scientifically evaluate the performance of your plant. What we will be focusing on today is on the fine farm particle shedding, the sterility assurance, the particle filtration efficiency, the bacterial filtration efficiency. We won't have time to go through everything. And um, we also will talk about the importance of action. Let's start with the easiest one, which is the sterility assurance level verification. Here you must make sure that your sterilizer is following a validated sterilization process and is in a position to give you a sterility of sure assurance level of 10 to the minus 6. So there is a standard for that, the ISO uh, 11137-1, which we are using for uh, sterilizing our Tyvek IsoClean clean home garments. If you follow an international standard like that, the order is does readily accept the certificate of sterility that is issued by your supplier. What will be changing is that if you don't have a validated sterilization process, you may have an issue. If you're autoclaving in-house or you're just irrigating your garments, this may no longer be acceptable. Because if you have not uh, defined and measured your initial bio burden, how can you make sure that all of your garments are sterile? Simply irradiating or simply autoclaving may not be good enough. There's still a risk that some of the garments have not been autoclaved long enough or at the right temperature or the steam didn't get to them or that the irradiation work dose was not appropriate to uh, anymore. So this will be very important. And we know that some um, sterilizers are just uh, supplying you with a certificate of sterility. Now a certificate of sterility, uh, uh, sorry, a certificate of irradiation without a certificate of sterility may no longer be good enough. Just seeing that the garment has been irradiated will not be acceptable anymore. We need to have a certified sterilization process with a sterility assurance level. Another example you can do for qualifying your material out of which the garments are being made is assessing the filtration efficiencies. So we'll be starting with the particle filtration efficiency. The EN standard 143 allows you to measure the particle barrier efficiency with salt particles that have a size of 0.3 micron. 0.3 micron, why it's so, so small? Because that's the smallest size that uh, human skin flakes are coming in. So by assessing the materials with its test, you have a scientific approach to find out in how much uh, your materials are filtering out the skin flakes of your operators. And you see here on this chart that there are some quite some differences. With our Tyvek IsoClean clean and sterile uh, garments, we have a particle filtration efficiency in this test of 67%, whereas reusable polyester garments, clean room garments, only have 12%. Equally important is, of course, the filtration efficiency against microorganisms. So here you have an American test, the ASTM F2101, which allows you to scientifically assess the bacterial filtration efficiencies. And here again, you see that there are quite some differences. While our Tyvek IsoClean, clean and sterile garments have a bacterial filtration efficiency of 99.5%. For reusable clean room garments, uh, it can vary between 60 and uh, 65 and 70 percent if the garments are brand new. The more you wash them, the more this uh, filtration efficiency goes down. Obviously. Particle shedding, as I said at the beginning, of the garments must also be checked. And here you have the uh, clean room standard uh, of the hand good one test, which allows you to assess the particle shedding of the garments by themselves. Not why the garments are actually being worn, but just by the garment themselves. This gives you a very good understanding of how much particles your garments are shedding. Here in this table, you see different uh, hand good one test results that, that we have gathered and run. And you see that uh, with the exception of the Tyvek Classic Irritate, all of the garments are meeting the highest category, so they are very clean. The Tyvek Classic is actually a chemical protective garment. It's 
not a chemical garment. It's a garment that we are using as a chemical protective garment. So even if you irradiate it, this does not make the garment clean. That's what I want to show here. If the garment has not been properly been cleaned processed, it will not be suitable anymore, not acceptable anymore, because the garments must be clean and sterile, not only sterile, clean and sterile. And uh, at DuPont, we are issuing with every box of Tyvek Isoclean garments we produce also a certificate of compliance, which you see on the picture here, which contains also the Hanke Duan test report. And we are only putting onto the market uh, the garments that meet the category one, the highest cleanliness garment. And for every number, for every batch, you will have a certificate of compliance. Again, this will be something that auditors will appreciate. But you must also assess the particle shedding and the particle retention efficiencies while your clean room garments are actually being worn. And for the time, there's only one test method that allows you to do that. That is the body box test. You see a picture here of such a, a, a body box. And uh, with the movements that are being done, it is really replicating um, what the operators are doing and the risk of particle shedding during the movements of the operator. What the body box cannot do is distinguish between particles shed by the operator and the particles shed by the garments. So you have a mix of both of them, but it's not important because that's what reality is. When your operators are inside the clean room garments, you have the risk of both. So we strongly recommend that when you're assessing your clean room garments, ask your suppliers to provide you a body box uh, test studies for the garments that you're using. And here again, you see that our Tyvek Isoclean, clean and sterile, is the best uh, performing in such a body box test. During the stability assessment, you must evaluate if the detector which this and the property of the garment will change over time, which, mean, which means that uh, garments are naturally aging. If you are washing your garments, clients as well. This may influence its properties and characteristics. So during the stability assessment, it is important that you validate the performances under the worst case conditions, which means for single-use garments, take garments from different batches that are at the end of their shelf. Instead of when you are out of the factory, end of and don't forget to assess also the packaging, which means the integrity uh, and the sterility of the, the packaging of the garments themselves. They may be different, okay? So you need to assess it as well because if the packaging is failing before the garments, you still have an issue because the garments inside your packaging may be contaminated. For reusable clean room garments, it's a little bit more complicated because you need to assess the moment in time when you're going to replace your clean room garments. So here you need to run uh, studies at different wash styles, uh, sterilizing and drying cycles. When they are brand new, in the middle, and at the expected end of life. Now this is important because uh, here I show you a study from the Professor Slunquist and Reinmüller that are clearly demonstrating that the more you wash a garment, the lower their bacterial filtration efficiencies will be. So, and this has a direct impact on the number of operators you can have inside your clean rooms. And this allows you also, when you're doing these assessments, to find out when is the moment in time when you need to replace the garments. You can also use the body box test, as Professor Romano from Milano has done uh, during this study where you see here. And they also show that there's a, a, a big increase of particles that are being shed inside the body box uh, when the garments have been washed uh, 30 times. And here again as well, uh, even when you're using reusable clean room garments, don't forget to assess the packaging itself and make sure that the packaging retains its integrity until the end of the shelf life for your reusable clean room garment, for example, six months here. And then finally, you need to go to the usability evaluation. The purpose of that is to make sure that all the, the garments can be used and that the risks are under full control. So 
This is typically done by the end users themselves. But don't hesitate to contact your suppliers, your clean room laundry, your reusable clean room garment to help you during the usability evaluation in order to make sure that you are mitigating as much as possible all the entire identified risks. So you see, the first DQ was very, very uh, uh, long. Now the next steps will be significantly shorter because they have a lower impact on quality. You then need to move uh, in the third step to the installation qualification. And this is uh, above all a formal check where you need to make sure that you have not forgotten anything in your contamination control strategy and that your clean room garment system is complete. Which means you need to have a look at your gowning and your degowning facilities to make sure that it really works as intended with garments that you're having. You need to check whether you have all the documentation certificates test reports from your suppliers. You need to uh, implement the instructions from your suppliers and when you're changing your clean room garments, adapting your SOPs for the degowning and the gowning, uh, gowning and the degowning. You need to make sure that you have set up uh, the logistical process uh, accordingly to make sure that you always have enough garments on stock uh, you don't want to run out of garments during your operations, of course. And a, a good tip from my side is uh, always have also a plan B that is already validated. For example, if you're using reusable clean room garments, why not qualify at the same time a single use clean room garment, preferably our type of ISO clean, clean and sterile, as a plan B, which can be readily supplied in case there's an issue uh, with the laundry or if the truck was caught in an accident and you don't have reusable clean room garments anymore in the system, to make sure that you can keep on producing with a validated and properly qualified clean room garment. Not that in a panic mode, you're just uh, buying something that has not been validated before. And then last but not least, make sure that all the operators are trained and qualified accordingly with your new system. The next step is the operational qualification of the OQ. And here you need to qualify the gowning and degowning concept. Involve all the steps included and don't forget the logistics and the material part. Have a close look also at the packaging your garments are coming in. Do you have enough layers of packaging so that you can bring uh, the garments from the warehouse until area or is it necessary to use uh, disinfectant in between because you're lacking maybe one layer of packaging. Our Tyvek IsoClean garments are packed as you see on the picture below in a multiple uh, layer of packaging allowing you to transport the garments from the warehouse to the gowning area without having to disinfect. And then finally you have the performance qualification or PQ. And there you need to validate the performance of your clean room garments under the worst case conditions. What does worst case conditions mean? Well, with the maximum number of operators inside your clean room wearing the eldest garments, those that are close to, your, to the end of their shelf life. You need to do the initial gowning qualification, visual and microbiologically assessed at least three times. And you need to do the gowning qualification for each of the persons that are allowed to go into your GMP grade A, B clean rooms. Now, I know this was a lot of information in a very short time, but let me summarize. Don't forget that clean room garment systems are a critical part of your contamination control strategy and process validation. Clean room garments have only one function and one function alone. They must keep the clean room clean. It's not about comfort, it's not about price, it's about keeping your clean room clean. And these properties must be properly assessed. And having a risk and science-based quality by design approach under the QRM management principle is certainly a very big effort at the beginning but it's the only strategy to effectively control your contamination risks by building in, designing in risk reductions, which will help you also gain a better understanding of knowledge of key aspects of your process. And this will be the right answer to the auditors. With the new GMP NX1, it has become very clear. 
So use an approach like that one to make sure that you meet all the regular requirements. I've been talking a lot now. Now it's your turn. Your turn. And uh, we would be happy to take any questions. If you have any questions from our audience. Um, yes, Steve, we have uh, five questions. So the first one is about the customer reaction about uh, all these new requirements. So if, I don't know if you have if you have any feedback from customer about um, um, this new requirement. Uh, you mean the new requirement from GMP Annex One? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Well, it, it goes on two spectrums. Huh? On, on the one hand, uh, we have some uh, customers that are using our garments for quite some time already that uh, started to do their work when the first draft of the GMP Annex 1 was circulated a couple of years ago, and they switched from reusable to Tyvek Isoclean, and they are pretty relaxed. And on the other hand, uh, we have another customer who is currently in full panic mode uh, because they didn't do anything until the new GMP and X1 officially came out. And now they realize that they have only until August 23 to be ready. So they have uh, only one year to get all the work done. So, yes, it all depends. Thank you, uh, Steve. And uh, so you say that some customers are panicking, but um, is there a transition period for this change to be applied? Or Yes, that's the one year. Yeah, okay. But one year is not a lot. No. <laughs> Thanks, um, Steve. I have another question. Is about, um, um, yeah, is there a resource, for example, a flyer or brochure to highlight all the DuPont uh, SK, SK, SKU range that are applicable for this new requirement? Yes, we do have our brochure for our Tyvek Isoclean clean room guard. Um, sorry. And uh, on top of that, there's the article that was published uh, by our colleagues. Uh, and, and I can share you the link, um, Nicola and Eva, afterwards, so you can share it with the audience. That is uh, going explaining more in detail what I have covered today. Thank you, Steve. <clears throat> Another question. Uh, do you provide uh, data to help pharma? A pharmaceutical company to validate your government? Yes, of course. Uh, all the data that we have, we share them openly. Uh, in some confidential data uh, that we are sharing, sometimes we ask that you have to sign a confidentiality agreement with us. But uh, typically, when we uh, start uh, talking about introducing clean room garments, uh, typically our pharmaceutical customers, they ask us for a CDA first. So uh, it's, it's no issue. We have open books, we have nothing to hide. Uh, all the test reports we make readily available. We even open uh, the doors if you want to audit uh, the manufacturing of our Tyvek materials, the manufacturing of our clean room garments, our clean room laundry, our uh, sterilizer. Our sterilizer. You, can, you can audit all of our facilities openly. No problem about that. Great, thank you, Steve. And uh, another question, will, uh, we will still be allowed to autoclave uh, our government uh, ourselves? Yes, as long as you have a validated and qualified autoclaving process. That can be tricky. But it is possible, it is perfectly feasible, it is asking a lot of work. So the best uh, recommendation I, I can give here is uh, take the ISO 11137-1 and follow the steps uh, in, in this standard to uh, validate and qualify your autoclaving process. Thank you, uh, Steve. And the last question that we received, uh, any plan from DuPont to create a disposable SOC in line with Annex 1? Disposable SOCs? Uh, it, it's a very good idea. We have indeed we have been looking into it, but uh, we realized that there are already disposable uh, clean room socks on the market that are significantly uh, less expensive than a Tyvek sock would be. So uh, it, it is possible, but economically, it's probably not viable. 
<laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Steve. Uh, I don't have any other question uh, at this time. Um, so, Eva, I'll let you uh, finish yeah. on this call. Yeah, so, but I have to say, take the chance. You still have some time to ask questions to Steve. Eva? Take the chance. Yeah. S sorry, I have a, a last one. <laughs> last minute. Yeah, question. good, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, Steve, is Dupont thinking about a new line of clean room mask since the Sierra line is discontinued? Uh, no, for the moment we are not looking into this. No, we are not. It's a person you have to pity because I like the Sierra mask. It was very nice. Okay, thank you, Steve. Yeah, it was a lot of good questions. And also the answers were great. So, we come to the end of our webinar this afternoon. And uh, I'd like to thank you once again for joining. And also a big thank you to Steve from DuPont for a very interesting and informative session with a lot of nice solutions. Uh, I liked it very much, Steve. And before leaving you, just a quick reminder to keep an eye on our webinar page to look out for webinars that may be of interest to you in future. So have a good Friday and weekend. Goodbye and uh, we do hope to see you soon again. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank bye. you.